Hello dear friends, this is your Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you again today and share another word with you from the Bible, <clears throat> under Bible Reflections, and I hope that this word will be for you, and that the Lord will bless it to your heart, because it comes from the heart, but it comes from the Bible. I want to share a word with you today con concerning uh, a word uh, that is concerning uh, the uh, invitation to heaven by one way, a one way to heaven. That one way is through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want you to see and understand this truth, and a truth that is taught in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that there is a life after this death, that we're going on to eternity, and we're going to live in eternity. And so there's heaven and there's hell. Oh, my dear friends, it's so serious. We need to know the way to heaven and get in that way. And the Bible teaches us over in the uh, 14th chapter of John, uh, a wonderful scripture we often hear and read so many times. It's in the 14th chapter and the first few verses of that wonderful chapter. And here's what it says. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and therefore I have gone. If, if otherwise, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so here's a word of comfort and, and expectation and encouragement to God's people. And it's a word of hope to those out there that are lost, that you can find a better way in a long time existence with God forever. And you can know the blessing of God in your life down here and in that life to come forever. I want you to notice, first of all, in this scripture that, uh, that uh, we need to believe in Jesus as God. We need to believe in Jesus and believe that He is God in the flesh when He walked among men. For the Bible says, you believe in God, believe also in me. And so we need to believe that, that Jesus is divine, that He always was, that He never had a beginning. Oh, he had a bodily, physical beginning at Bethlehem when he was born of the Virgin Mary. And we uh, celebrate Christmas. But he had a beginning before, far before, before that. He was always with God. He was always God. From beginning, from everlasting to everlasting. Listen to the word in John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And everything was made, was made by him the Word of God. And then we read over in verse 14 and it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word was made flesh. That's Jesus. And He was born of the Virgin. And so we see the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word is God. Over in chapter 10 of John, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And they shall none pluck them out of my hand. And my Father, which is greater than all, holds them in his hand, and none shall pluck them out of my Father's hand. Oh, my dear Christian, you're safe if you're in Christ. Then he says, I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. And so we see the importance of knowing that Jesus is God as well as man. He called himself the, many times the Son of Man because he was man, became a man for us that we might become the children of God in him. And so he was also God. He was also God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He was born as a man, but as, 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 as God, he was born of a virgin. A woman had never been with a man. The conception was made to the power and the Holy Spirit of God. As a man, he attended a wedding, festivities. But as God, he changed and turned the water 
into wine for the festivity. As a man, he grew tired and sat on the well and asked for a drink of water from a woman that came to draw water from the well. But as God, he told a woman, I can give you the living water of eternal life. And he gives that life. I'm drinking from that water today and I know that it's real and it's right and it's good for you. I want you to drink from it. I want you to put your cup out and let the Lord fill you and drink from the water of life. Jesus is the water of life. As a man, as a man, he stood at the grave of Lazarus and wept. But as God, he spoke to a man that was dead four days and said, Lazarus, come forth. And a dead man walked out of that tomb. As a man, he went to the cross. And he died and he suffered. Oh, and he died. But as God, he rose again the third day, hallelujah, and went back to heaven where he's on his throne right now. I want you to believe that Jesus Christ is not only the Son of Man, but he's the Son of God. Eternal, everlasting. One day every knee will bow to him. And so believe this, it is important. I want you to look back now at this scripture where Jesus said, and I, in my Father's house are many mansions, and I'm gone to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a prepared place for God's people. Praise the Lord. Wonderful place for God's people. Vance Habner once said, when he was young, only 16, he went out preaching. He started preaching when he was just a boy. And, uh, but he said that when he was growing up in his early teens, his dad would always tell him, as he went to the front porch with him, he'd say, now Vance, I want you home before dark. And as a teenager, as a young teenager, he said, I always got home before dark. But he said, one day up yonder in glory, one day up yonder in heaven, I'm going to meet my dad and he's going to say to me, oh, I'm glad to see you, son. And I'm going to say, Dad, here I am, and I got home before dark. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing to know that we're going to be in heaven with the Lord and with God's people, where there's peace, where there's power, where there's joy, where love surrounds and is supreme in everything. We need to see that God's grace is sufficient down here. It's going to overflow up there also. And so we walk in the light down here, but oh, what joy there will be over yonder when we walk with the Lord. And so, dear friends, look up, believe, Jesus is real. The, uh, uh, the eternal heaven is waiting for you. Oh, the eternal heaven is waiting. And the reverse of that is hell, with his rough fire and his darkness. Oh, my friend, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus and pray, God, forgive me. I believe he paid for all my sins and died and rose again. And I'll meet him over yonder. And I'll meet my loved ones there. Oh, praise God. Dear Christian, look up. That loved one is waiting for you. Look up. Those loved ones are out yonder by the river of the flows by the throne of God. And they're waiting for you to come to the waters, to come to the river, to come to heaven, to come to life eternal. Robert Lowry was a preacher. And he went to, to New York City during the plague back in the late 1800s when there was sickness and the plague was all over New York. People were dying and he was ministering, ministering. And he, he realized how much it meant when he was talking to someone about to die, when they said, oh, praise God, I'm ready to go. And how much it meant when he waited on some about ready to die and they were fearful knowing not what was going to happen. Oh, we need to be ready and gather at the river. Anyway, Robert Lowry later wrote that old hymn that they've been singing for hundreds of years, Shall We Gather at the River? And praise God, it's a good old hymn. Shall we gather at the river? Their bright angel feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river, oh, the beautiful, the beautiful river. 
Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Oh, praise God, praise God. We'll gather at the river. I want you to know that. And Jesus said, because I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I've gone to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And I want you to notice now that Jesus, Jesus is the only way. The only way to heaven. But verse 6, he says, I, uh, rather, uh, Thomas said to him, Lord, how can we know the way you're going? And Jesus said, I'm the way. How can we know the way to heaven? Jesus said, I'm the way. I am the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the only way to heaven because he's the only one that paid for our sins. And somebody has to pay for our sins or we'll never get to heaven. According to the Bible, and so we need to read this. Over in the book of John, uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, Jesus said, enter in at the at, at a uh, straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth down to destruction. And many will go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow the way which leads to life. And few there be that find it. I want you to find it, the narrow way, the narrow way. I used to think and used to preach in my early days that that meant you couldn't do this, and you couldn't do that, and you couldn't do this, and you shouldn't do that. It's narrow. But I've come to believe it's narrow basically because it's the only way. The only way. See, that makes it narrow. That makes it narrow. Two and two make four. That's all. It don't make anything but four. And that makes it narrow. It can't be four and a half. It can't be five. It can't be three. It's four. And so it's narrow. Truth is narrow. And Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth. And that makes it narrow. He's the only way. He's the only way. And he's the way for you, my dear friend, today. I want you to believe that and trust him. There are some out there that are listening to this message that truly needs it. You're looking for hope. Here it is. God says, I'm with you down here to cleanse you from every sin and give you what you need to make it all the way through. All the way through. Rejoice in the Lord. Learn to praise God. Learn to thank God. Learn to be grateful and look up and quit looking back and worrying about things back there. It's all over. It's all gone. It's all forgotten. God said, I've remembered them no more. God's forgotten. You forget. And Christian, walk on with your eyes toward the Lord and your hope in heaven and you'll have a place over oh, yonder, beyond the river. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the only way. Trust Him and live forever. Amen and Amen.